Welcome to part one, the story of Honey Perch. At the time this story was produced, Honey Perch had never been grown as a commercial aquaculture species. They were known in the far northern parts of Australia as Sooty Grunter or Black Brim. They are also well known as an excellent table fish. Honey perch can be found right across the top end of Australia and since they were first discovered by the early settlers they've been a favourite eating fish. Generally the waters that they come from are crystal clear and usually in flowing rivers and streams. I caught my first wild honey perch around 30 years ago and they are still one of my favourite eating fish. Compared to other species such as the silver perch or jade perch, they're not nearly as oily, but this is perhaps because they come from the wild. I'm yet to try out an aquaculture fish. They may end up being a lot more oily because they're being fed aquaculture pellets. And until the first trials are completed, and we do an omega-3 test and a taste test, we won't actually know the answer to the question. Are they more or less oily than silver perch or jade perch? We caught our fish that we use as breeders, our brood fish, from two major sources. Rivers in Queensland draining into the west coast or the Gulf of Carpentaria and rivers draining to the east into the Pacific Ocean along the Great Barrier Reef. These two genetic populations have been separated for who knows how many millions of years. There is the potential for some hybrid vigour if we use say a male from the east coast and a female from the west coast or vice versa and that is our intention to try them out and see if there's any hybrid vigour or fast growing qualities to be gained by crossing the two fish from each of the drainages, the west coast and the east coast. Here you see us fishing for breeders in one of the rivers that drains out of the mountains into the ocean on the east coast of far north Queensland. There's a saying in Australia, hard work but someone's got to do it. And I'm happy to volunteer for this job even if I am just holding the camera. You got the pliers in your back pocket? Honey perch, or sooty grunter as they're known by recreational anglers, have been stocked in public lakes across the far northern parts of Queensland for around 25 years. They are an important recreational angling species, and amongst the anglers they're also quite popular as a table fish. we've finished on the east coast, we'll move across the mountain range to collect some of the fish from the western drainage rivers. This part of Australia is well known for its crocodiles, so we restrict our collecting activities to very shallow waters well away from any habitats 
where the saltwater crocodiles might live. The fish that we caught on the west coast, because of the shallow upper reaches of the rivers, were quite small. We also noticed that they had a much better honey colour. Look at that beautiful colour. While we were in this area, we also collected some of the coal grunter, an ornamental species. Beautiful little coal grunter, look at those colours. I can't let go because he might jump out of my hand. But look at that, look at the colour. Just beautiful. It's magnificent, isn't it? There were freshwater crocodiles in this area, but they keep well away from any human activity. But there were still hazards for the fishermen. It's not the crocodiles you have to watch out for, it's the actual fish that you're catching. It's not long before they draw blood. Still rolling? Yep. Gotta watch out. Hey, what do you want? Picture of the plot or the fish? You gotta watch out for the spikes. I can get a fish every day. Getting the blood's not so easy. Oh, I can fix that up. Once we'd collected the fish that we needed for our breeding program, we tried a little recreational fishing at night. We did catch a couple of sooty grunter, but it wasn't long before these big fellas came along and ruined any fishing activities. On the way back to our hatchery, some 1,200 kilometres away, we stopped to do a water change and check on the condition of our broodstock. They seemed quite happy in the tank. The coal grunter and the sooty grunter which we now call honey perch, travel quite well. Once we get them back to the hatchery, and after they've settled in for about three days, we weigh the fish and put a microchip in each one so we can identify them. The smaller ones were from the west coast, but it won't be long before they grow big, and without a microchip, we won't know what's what. These big fellows, came from a lake and were mostly around three kilos. After spending around a year in our broodstock ponds, we were able to bring them out into the lab and successfully spawn them. Too many. All of them. <laughs> no, I didn't get all of them. There's five, six in here, are you right? After we harvested the baby fish from the plankton pond, we brought them into the hatchery and converted them over to aquaculture feed. The weaning process was really easy. Within three days, all of them were eating commercial aquaculture food. 
fry have now been supplied to three people in Asia. One in Hong Kong, one in Singapore, and one in Malaysia. They're being tried in a recirculating aquaculture system, as well as open earth ponds. Hopefully it won't be long before we're seeing the honey perch available at restaurants for the table.